is Cindy from Code for Couples, and today I have a special guest. Um, I have Lisa Lerner, who has been ministering uh, to police, doing police ministry since 1990, and she is the co-founder with her husband of a organization called Bless the Badge. So welcome very much, Lisa. Thank you for being here. I appreciate Hi, that. Hi, thank you, Cindy. Uh, I was telling you, I'm so excited to have guests now. So this is super <laughs> cool and exciting. You know, one of my one of my goals is to bring all these people together that want to help uh, police couples and LEO wives and um, people to have stronger relationships together. Because as you and I both know, yeah. um, there's some ins and outs to this, and so it can be challenging. Um, so I was really excited when I found. Right your organization, which I found it over Facebook. I was on a Facebook group and I was like, what's this nice. bless the badge thing? Nice. Um, and so you had a, um, a seminar in Fort Worth, I think it was. And that's what I had seen. So mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit, let's start with, tell me a little bit about your experience with law enforcement. And like you said, you've been doing police, or like I said, you've been doing police ministry for a while. So t tell us a little bit about your experience first and how are you related to LEO life? <laughs> well, um, first, Cindy, thanks for inviting me on here. This is my first like podcast video thing. So I appreciate it. Um, yes, uh, my husband and I were married in 89. Um, which, yeah, dates me severely, but that's okay. And, uh, <laughs> and he was already an officer when we met, so we didn't go through the transition of somebody becoming an officer, you know, which we know um, mm -hmm. gets into quite detail. But after we got married, we started, um, I started meeting wives at my house. We had Bible studies. We had kind of get-togethers, and I really saw the need for um, encouragement, and I saw the need for you know, having like-minded women around you that are going through the same thing you're going through, which we know our mm -hmm. life is very unique. Mm -hmm. and you can't really compare mm -hmm. it to other relationships because we have so many unique challenges. Mm -hmm. So we started doing that then and did it for a while. And um, then we did something called Adopt a Cop uh, for a while, which is really, really okay. cool. You know, we didn't start that. We had, you know, we became a part of it from somewhere else. I think it was started up north somewhere. And we did that, um, praying for officers and sending them birthday cards and, you know, stuff like that, just to acknowledge them and encourage them. And then in 2001, um, Bless the Badge was started. And it was, it became like, okay, let's kind of pull this together and really get serious about how we can make this work and how we can be more effective in what we feel we're called to do. So it started out with doing events and, um, you know, because we thought officers need a place where they can go um, in public, but they can relax as much as possible um, with their families. So, so we important. Out bowling alleys and movie theaters and even a lake one time we did and had them all out there where you couldn't get into the facility or the venue without a badge. So oh, nice. that way they could chill a little bit with their brothers and their families and, you know, not constantly be swiveling their head and running into somebody they deal with on the street. And, you know, we know how it is. Yes. So, so we did that and it was really a blessing and we enjoyed it a lot. And then we helped some officers that were injured or needed help. And uh -huh. so we did that for a while. And then in um, 2007, we both got ordained and became ordained ministers. And in 2008, we joined In Faith Ministries, which has become our 501c3. And okay. they're American missionaries. They do missionaries to the United States, only the United States. And they've been around for 200 years. Wow. I know, right? So we yeah. were like, okay, that's some longevity there. We can hook up <laughs> with them. So, so we got with them to kind of help us get our ministry along because we weren't really quite ready to become a 501c3, but we needed the, the structure and we needed the covering and we needed all the other things to go for. So it was a great partnership and still is. We're still with them. Um, and then in 2010, I became a police chaplain. Oh, okay. I didn't know women could be police chaplains until 2010. <laughs> oh, wow. So I was like, what? 
what? This is what I've been waiting for. So, this is my hand in the glove. I'm like, okay, I find that so interesting because you know that there's female police officers. I know, so, but in ministry, girl, you know, in ministry, it's a whole <laughs> new ball game. Okay. 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 You got know, it. It's, it's like, it's just different. Okay. Let me tell you. And, and in some, some denominations it's acceptable and in some denominations it's not. Sure. So, Sure. I don't like to push it or anything, but Jesus don't mind. And that's all that matters to me. There so, you go. Yes. So I became a, a police chaplain in 2010 and I was a chaplain for three different agencies, smaller agencies here in Johnson County. Okay. Um, and then in 2014, we had our very first conference. Um, it was a bless the badge wives conference. And we partnered with Allison and Reby, who is uh, wives on duty at a San Antonio. Okay. She just okay. wrote a recent book, Cups and Coffee. She's awesome. You need to interview her next. I will do that. Cups <laughs> and Coffee. There's a plug for her book, Cups and yes. Coffee. It's Allison. a devotional, right? Exactly. Yes. yes. On Amazon. One. Yes. It's her second one, actually. So she's, okay. she's on a roll. Um, so we did that. We had about 130 women uh, come, and it was phenomenal. And from that, because we had been doing ministry for a while, uh, individual counseling, marriage counseling, family counseling, um, helping out wherever we could and wherever we saw a need. Yeah. But the conference approach was like a shotgun approach. And it was, it seemed so much more effective because we could plant seeds and we could, we could give tools, you know, the mm -hmm. tool, you know, the more equipment you have on your Sam Brown belt, the better you are. And, you know, I'm dating myself there because that's old school. The other <laughs> duty belt was called the Sam Brown belt back in the day. <laughs> but anyway, so in the conference, um, we can give them a lot of resources. We can give them a lot of tools. We can give them a lot of knowledge of things I wish I'd have known, you know, 30 years ago. Yes. Um, and, and all of that. And then they can take that and make what they want from that. We had a, a prayer group in Austin start from three years ago from that conference that's still going today. Oh, um, that's incredible. We've had all kinds of things where women just started something and said, Hey, I want to reach out to my fellow sisters. Yes. I want to, you know, equip each other and encourage each other because I tell all of them, whenever we talk, I'm like, you need to become a mentor to someone and then be yes. mentored by someone that not just in life, but especially in the police life, you, you got to have the, it in the arena. Yeah, right. exactly. So yes. it, that's kind of what it's become. And then we've, we've had three, three now, one, two, three. Yeah. Three now we've had three conferences now. Um, and then we're having Austin round rock, in August, we're going to Brownwood, Texas in September, and we're going to Mountain View, California in October. So wow. I know, and I'm just like, what? How so, did that happen? They just heard about you yeah, and said, word of, word of mouth here? is like, hey, I went to this conference and you need to go do this. And, and everything we do is free, okay? Yes. It's free. Um, everything we do, we don't charge for any conferences. Um, we don't charge for any counseling. We don't charge for any anything that we do has always been free because the guys work extra jobs as it is. They can't right. afford, you know, and, and I just me, and that's not there. I know there's a lot of ones out there that do charge and I'm not dissing them. You know, I'm really not. I'm just saying for us, I never want anyone to have to choose or not come to get something because they don't have yeah. the funds to do it. So yeah. everything yeah. we do um, has always been that way. We don't charge to speak uh, anywhere we go. We don't do any of that. So it's, it's been a blessing um, to be able to see these women hear something that's like, man, I wish I would have known this and our lives would have been so much easier. Yes. You know? And it's like, it's just get this out there, equip them, help them, encourage them, support them. Because you and I both know we have, what, an 85% divorce rate? Yes. Yes. You know, it's... It's crazy, but I, we understand why. I mean, yes, we know the unique challenges it's that tough. come. It's like, okay, how do we combat this? How do we equip each other, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to fight that, you know, fight that easy way out, you know? Yes. Like, well, just because all the guys are like, oh, you only have three or four wives. Oh, well, the, you know, that's what we all do. It's just expected. You know, it's like a common and we're like, no, that shouldn't be the common thing. Like, oh, I'm just going to have three or four wives through my career. It, it doesn't have to be that way. No. Really. 
It doesn't. And I love, I, you know, there's a couple of things that you said right there that I really like. The fact that you said, like, this is your way of giving back. Your way yes. of, like, you just went mentoring, but on, a, like, a gigantic <laughs> scale is what you did. You said, forget the little mentoring. I'm going to go big or go home. You're a good Texas girl there, you know? <laughs> go big or go home. Yes. So, I, I really, I hear exactly what you're saying as far as mentoring somebody because being in the field myself or being a wife for 17 years, um, it's, you know, I, I wish I would have had any of the information that I now have, which I, I did not really start getting until probably five years ago when I was on, we were a little rocky on things and I thought, okay, what's going on? How do I need to look at this differently? We right. just kind of lived through it. There were right. other wives, there were a few other wives that I talked to, but we weren't a really cohesive group. So mm -hmm. not only are you mentoring, but you're bringing other wives in the area together to yes. form a community and a sense yes. of community yes. that they can maybe link with other people, network with other people. They don't feel alone. One of the biggest things that I read all the time or hear from other people is feeling alone, especially at night. Yes. Um, Right. The so, isolation is, is crazy. Yes. You know, we, we do it because we fall into the trap of the fear. Mm -hmm. And we fall into the trap of you know, our husband saying nobody needs to know our business. Right. Right. You right. Know, but, yes. But there comes a point when it's like, okay, the isolation is never good. It, it's, right. just, it's not good for you. It's not good for your kids. It's not good for your marriage. Isolation is not, it's just not good. But right. We fall into that trap. So what are some of the things that uh, when people come to bless the badge, what do they, what can they expect to learn? What are some of the things that they're going to be empowered with or that they're going to walk out with? Well, um, some of the main things, you know, first of all, it's to, it's to give them hope. Okay. Hope is huge. Um, mm -hmm. to give them a lot of hope that things are not always going to be the way they are. Um, the shift work. Uh -huh. The, you know, the single parenting, the, all the stuff that's that way, they're stages, you know, they're just, they're stages and you're going to get through it. You know, you're, you're going to get on the other side of it and yes. to try to, and, and to make that community, like you said, to, to build that community so they can lean on one another they can help one another, mm -hmm. they can support one another through those stages. Um, you know, we just want to equip them with knowledge and surround them with resources. Uh, that, that's what we do. It's like, how can I help you where you're at and how can I yeah. help you prepare for where you're going and yes. keep you from where you've been? Oh, love so it. That, that's what you can expect from us. I love it. Um, what do you now do? It's, it's just, now is it just for wives or well, can the officers come too? Well, the officers can come. Um, okay. Our conference thing is very flexible. Okay. Um, if you want to bring a conference to your area, we can tailor it for what your vision is for your area. If you want to do couples, we can. We can okay. do retreats. Um, if not a couple a day retreat, we do. Usually our conference is like one day, six hours, and it's geared towards wives. But we can have a, a couple one. Um, my husband uh, retired. He spent 30 years on the street. So he did street patrol for the whole 30 years by choice. Wow. He just didn't want to promote because he loved being on the street. He felt that's where he was the most effective. Mm -hmm. uh, he loved it. And so that's where he stayed. And, you know, it was, it was a little harder on us because we stayed with the shift work, you know, and nowadays it's yes. 12 hours, which I am not a fan of, but that's another story. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, uh, we went through all that for 30 years, but yes, he's, and, and the thing is with both of us, we have the tenure of saying he's been out there. He understands it. He knows it. He's worked with a lot of officers just individually, um, mm. you know, to talk through things. So that's, that's the thing about it is we both together, we have something for couples, you know, we've been married 28 years, um, you know, and that's almost, a, that's very rare. And yes. In our life. Uh, yes. So we can say, okay, yeah, there are times when it's going to suck. You know, it's, it's going to be not fun. Um, and, but you can get on the other side of it. You can get through it, you know, and, and how do you do that? What does that look like? You know, what does it look like for you? Cause it looks different for, even though we're the same, we're very different. 
Yes. Um, so, you know, what does that look like for you? And how can you take the tools that we can give you and the knowledge and manipulate that for what works in your household, you know, with That's awesome. what you've got going on. Yeah. So you just said he was on the street for 30 years, right? You've been married. what do you say? 28, 28, yeah. 28 years. Yeah. What, what has, what has been your biggest challenge? Uh, that's a big question, but what, what's one of your, what was one of your challenges being a wife of an officer that was on the street that long? Well, you know, I, I've had that question before and I can't really say there's one thing, but the challenge is there's different challenge in each stage. Um, like as a rookie, my challenge was fear. Um, mm. you know, the fear of the job, the fear of everything going on, the fear of life becoming completely different and what you did and where you went and, you know, the, the whole thing. It's, it's yes. an encompassing lifestyle. It's not just a job, as we know. Right. So, you know, it was the fear. And then a couple of years in, it became single parenting. It became how mm -hmm. do I work this shift? Because in El Paso, which is where he started, El Paso, Texas, Oh wow! They change shift every thirty days, so it was days Holy in cow. the graveyards every thirty days. And then I had a an infant, and you know our daughter, and it was like, how do you, you know, it's just, it's crazy. But you you know you make it through it, and you figure out how to make it work. But that was a challenge for that stage. And then about ten fifteen years, it was how do we keep our lives together instead of living separate lives? Because I started working full time and then he's working shift work and you have the passing and sometimes not seeing each other for days at a time. Right. So it's right. Like, how do we stay together and be intentional about our relationship when mm -hmm. it seems like we have such separate lives and it seems so much easier to just say, well, I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to let him do his thing. That will kill your marriage. Yes. I promise you it will. Yes. So how do we become intentional about keeping that? So that was a challenge for that stage. And then now in retirement, <laughs> it's like, I don't know what to do with them 24 seven. We've been <laughs> each other longer now than these last two years. And we have a 28, you know, awake. Um, so, <laughs> so it's like, Oh, like, you're here need to go play with guns or something. Go yeah, the range. You're, you're here all the time, all day, all night. Yeah. So, but I cherish every minute. We worked hard for it. Um, you know, yes. and to get here intact, him physically intact, our marriage intact. Um, you know, it's miraculous. It really is. We we worked hard for it and we're we're Con we're enjoying it. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, it's you're right. It is a lot of hard work and you know, I, I it's not an easy life. It's not no. an easy life. And no, man. Um, I know people sometimes come up to me and they say, Oh my gosh, you know, it's, you have a, you have a hard job being his wife or something like that. And, and I'm like, eh, and I'm kind of dismissive, but you, you know, you're exactly right. It's not an easy life, no. uh, but it's something we choose. We love them. Yep. That's when he why. signs up, so, sign up. That's yeah. the deal. I mean, you That's can't, exactly right. You sign up. But the thing is, is, you know, we have the the biggest family on earth. You know, I mean, I could tell you so many stories about how wives in other states and other cities and other places have, you know, come to my daughter's rescue when she was traveling. And we've still even never met face to face. But yeah, wow. I, I mean, because they're if they know your blue family and your law enforcement, man. There ain't nothing that we won't do for each other. I mean, yes. and that's the amazing part of it. It's like, yeah, it's a struggle. Yes, it's difficult. And, and yeah, we have our unique challenges. But man, you know, you wouldn't give it up for nothing. You know, it, it's, right. it's like I wouldn't change anything because the feeling of, of having that and, and being surrounded by that and, and knowing we share something really special that a lot of people don't get the privilege of doing that's what makes it so awesome and, and overcomes all the times when you're like, why did I marry this man? <laughs> I love your passion. I love your passion for that. And I love the fact that, I mean, the, that's probably part of the reason why you're like, you know, I don't charge for this because this is, this is about family. Yes. And I love that you incorporated yes. that right there to say it's about family. Yes. Um, and I, that's, 
it's so important because you're right. It's all like, I mean, to be cliche and use the lingo, right? Like we all got each other six. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's it's that kind of a thing. And once you exactly. learn that, you're like, okay, we got it. Yeah. So yeah. what's something, I'm going to go back and it, like, what's something that you wish you, well, let me put it a different way. What would you like to share if you were able to tell somebody one piece of advice? What would you like to share? What would you like people to know? I think the thing that would be most helpful is to be flexible. Mm. It's, it's really hard when you've got structure and shift work and things like that and you're trying to make things work and, and arrange things in life that goes. Cut each other some slack. You know, apply some grace. Be flexible and be ready to shift and change if necessary. You know, because we all know the dinners that get cold and you can't show up for dinner and all the holidays and, you know, birthdays and anniversaries that shift work doesn't allow them to be at. Mm -hmm. we, we all know that. And we know they really want to be there. I mean, they do. And, and it's hard for us because we get angry and we get our feelings hurt and understandably, but he can't help it. He cannot go to his chief and say, Oh, no. got to go. Can't be here at work today. I mean, he just, he can't change it. And, and he wants to be there. He really wants to be there. So oh, I would yeah. say be flexible and then learn about hypervigilance. Please learn about hypervigilance. That will change mm -hmm. your life. It will change how you understand him, how he understands himself. And it stops so much dissension because you understand the physiological change that goes through their body from doing the job they do. And that answers a lot of things of the wife always thinks it's her fault. You know, oh, he's not as happy when he's at home or he's, you know, he's down or he's, you know, he's, he doesn't seem as excited and, you know, he doesn't want to make decisions and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And once you understand that, then you're like, oh, okay, I get it now. I understand that he can't help it. I mean, it's, it is a physiological, which you understand and know it's a physiological shift that happens to them when they've been up in hypervigilance for 12 hours or eight hours or whatever it is. And every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So they're going to swing low and need to, recover, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, in every way, state, and form, right. they got to recover, and then they can come back to normal after, what is it, 24 hours or something that it yes. shifts back, something like that, you know, I think it's 12 to 24 hours, they can shift back to normal, right. and be their normal, um, but once we understand that, we're like, okay, I can't hit him at the door when he gets home with everything that happened all day, <laughs> and what was work like, and the kids are all there, and he's just like, I can't, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know because he can't give him 30 minutes, you know, or plan on a time and say, okay, take an hour or 30 minutes and chill and, you know, blindly work the remote in the magic chair or, you know, do whatever you need to do to gather yourself. But then after that agreed amount of time, you have to engage yeah. as dad and as husband. So if I had known that, oh man, it would have saved so many fights and so many, you know, emotional roller coaster pity parties and, and uh, oh my gosh, all the stuff that you go through going, what am I doing wrong? You know, and it's, it's not you, it's, it's the job, you know, and learn to be flexible and just roll with it. You know, it's, it's not always going to be that way. And I think that is great. That is great advice because those are the two things, you know, and unfortunately I didn't even learn about hypervigilance until about four years ago. Right. Right. And, and, and I know. <laughs> and that is, that should be like yes. law enforcement officer, wife or spouse, you know, however you want to say exactly. it. 101. Exactly. And that's why, that's why the program that you offer in bless the badge is so important because it brings all of that information kind of to the table to say, Hey, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? Hey, here's some resources together. Yeah. So that's awesome. I yeah. will. Yeah. And, and we are totally on the same page. Um, <laughs> I, I am excited. I'm going to get this posted prior to your August. I think it's August 12th. Yes, that you're going to be in Round Rock. If somebody wants to sign up for one of your um, workshops, how do they do that? 
Um, they just go to blessthebadge.com. Um, we have a website there, and under our events, it has everywhere we're going, and there's a link there because we're we're very cautious and safe about where we're meeting, and it's not publicly advertised because we know how crazy the world is, especially now. Um, so when we meet, we don't put it out and advertise it publicly. So when you go to the website to register, you'll go there, and it'll take you to a link to register for it. And then we'll have questions there which qualify who you are and, and all of that. And then um, you'll get the, the information on the locations and the time and, and all of that. So that's how we got it worked out. Very good. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for being with us, for being with me and bringing your information and for um, your ministry thank to you. uh, not just police officers, but to all of our families and impacting so many people. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Cindy. Um, and once again, you can get a hold of Lisa by going to blessthebadge.com mm -hmm. and check out any of our information or her workshops coming up. And um, I, I look forward to seeing you on August 12th for sure. Yes, me too. It's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.